Greetings Watch Watchers and welcome to this week's edition of Keep Watching. Thanks for joining us tonight and we are really excited about every week we're growing in the number of viewers of the show and we've been excited about the things we've been able to cover here, uh, being able to spend a little more time on things and really get in depth. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and uh, we hope you can keep watching every week. It is now anchored at 10 o'clock Eastern Time on Thursdays and that's 7 o'clock Pacific Time. So uh, we tried to make sure we got it where you could pretty much catch it, whether you're East Coast or West Coast, it's not going to be too late or too early. So join us every Thursday for Keep Watching. If you're watching on Facebook, be sure and hit like of the R2AWatches.com page and sign up for our newsletter. In fact, right now you want to sign up to win a 000 of 3,000 one-of-a-kind Maria watch. Uh, the contest is going right now. Um, you want to sign up for that, that automatically signs you up for our newsletter as well. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Look below, you're going to see links to the watches that we're talking about today. Today we are talking about the Caspian Sea Monster, the new Caspian Sea Monsters from Vostok Europe. Um, but we're also, I wanted before we get to that, I wanted to open up and talk about something really, it's kind of a, been a, this emergent thing that's happened recently. And I, we're really excited about it here at R2A Watches. And uh, we hope we can get you excited about it, too. There's a group, I think those who, who know Vostok Europe know that collectors of Vostok Europe, fans of Vostok Europe, are really big fans. I mean, you're ardent. You are um, really committed to the brand, and you love it. And there's a new page uh, on Facebook that started not long ago, um, and it's called Vostok Europe Timepieces. It's a closed group, so we, it, the way it was set up, it wasn't set up to be one of those open pages where just anybody can go. But if you are interested, if you're a real fan of Vostok Europe and, and, and the other brands that, you know, that, that come along in terms of being associated with that part of the world are welcome there as well. People do talk about, uh, for instance, Sermansky or, or maybe Sokolia or, or so forth. And sometimes people show their vintage pole yachts. But it is a page primarily and intended for Vostok Europe lovers, people who love this brand, who collect it. Um, right now, it's uh, I think it's about 300 members. Um, so you're going to have to ask to join, uh, and you know, so you, you have to go in and, and ask for permission to join because it is a closed group. But really, if you are a fan of Vostok Europe, you want to see people who are posting pictures every day of wrist shots, of uh, specialty shots that they're shooting, talking about things that they're excited about with Vostok Europe. You want to go there. One of the things that uh, uh, Kelly, who's one of the, um, I believe he's an administrator on the page. Um, he started something just this past week, uh, well, yesterday, actually, and I decided to go ahead and wear it again today. And we're, he's calling it Energia Wednesday. And we've got the hashtag, hashtag Energia Wednesday. And we're encouraging everybody on Wednesday to wear their Energia from Vostok Europe um, and uh, post a picture, a wrist shot, a uh, shot with it sitting in somewhere cool, whatever, we don't care. Uh, but Energia Wednesday, we're going to try to get that hashtag rolling uh, the Energia is, you know, I mean, it's an amazing timepiece. Uh, we may even do other days of the week where we associate them with different models as well. But right now, that's what we're starting with. I posted yesterday mine with the little, uh, um, it's a bloody rabbit stuffed animal that Vostok Europe gave me one year for Christmas. Um, and I, I posted with that yesterday with my, my prototype of the Energia, which is a zero zero as well, which usually are the only only um, reserved for prototypes. This was actually a, a gift to me personally from, from Igor Zavosky, the managing director of Vostok Europe. Okay, so go and check out Vostok Europe timepieces and join the group, and we would love to have you. So I'm going to move on and now talk about the new Caspian Sea Monsters from Vostok Europe. Um, I do always like to give like just. 20 seconds for those of you who haven't heard of Vostok Europe before. You may be new to the brand. It's a boutique brand based in Vilnius, Lithuania. Uh, they Every watch is designed and hand-assembled there in their factory. They have seven full-time watchmakers that hand-assemble every watch there. They have in-house designers. Uh, they really are, for a boutique brand, it's amazing what they do from start to finish. I, I like to say they start with a blank piece of paper and they finish with a completed watch. And everything they do is custom. Um, Vostok Europe doesn't do any... Um, where they just go to a manufacturer that's already got basically a pre-designed watch and, you know, they just put their name on it. No, they create everything custom. It's the difference between buying a shoot, a, a shoot, 
buying a shirt, <laughs> not a shirt, a suit, I will get there eventually. It's the difference between buying a suit off the rack and having one tailor made. Everything we bought is like Europe was custom. So the Caspian Sea Monster. This is the new line of Caspian Sea Monsters. Now, if you are an old hand at Vostok Europe and you've been following them for years and you love the brand and you've been collecting for years, you know that the first group of Caspian Sea Monsters came out in 2008. So now coming up on 10 years ago. They were the first watches that Vostok Europe ever produced using tritium, trigolite, whatever you want to call them, tubes from MB Microtech. Those are the tubes that give you the constant illumination. So you don't have to charge them up in the sun. They have a substance called tritium in them, and the tritium is constantly activating and agitating the loom inside the tube. And then that is what gives you the illumination all the time. It doesn't matter what uh, lighting condition you're in, uh, low light, uh, whatever. You know, and the thing that's really cool about it, tritium as opposed to, say, Superluminova, which I love Superluminova, and when companies do that well, in fact, I will put a plug in. I am very proud of the loom that we do at uh, Pranzius Watch Company. Uh, we do 15, uh, 15 silt string layers of Superluminova, and it's super bright. But the downside of Superluminova is you charge it up, and, you know, it's not not going to be that long before it starts to fade. You know, you might get an hour, an hour and a half out of it, I'm, you know, and that's if you're in a really dark room. Um, it's much brighter than tritium is when it's first charged up, but it, it does fade. Tritium stays lit all the time, kind of like me on the weekends. Um, so you can put it in your dresser in a complete, you can put it in a drawer, completely dark, you can take it out a year later, five years later, it's still going to be, it's still going to light up. It's still going to have illumination. So that's one of the really cool things about Tritium. Vostok Europe was really wanted to get into that. Um, tritium tubes, by the way, have been around for a, a long time. I believe it's since the 1960s. Uh, MB Microtech of Switzerland has been making Tritium tubes. Um, but they became really popular in a bigger way in watches, I would say, right around the time actually that Vostok Europe got into it, they may have actually been a little bit ahead of the curve in terms of it becoming something that was that become pro prolific. I mean, now there are many, many brands that use tritium tubes. Some of that was because of the loosening up of uh, the import restrictions in the United States. And they, because they were starting to build watches that were sport watches and watches to be used in extreme situations and so forth, they wanted to get into the tritium. Now, as I prattle on about that, but hopefully you enjoyed that little education about tritium if you didn't know about it. And if you did, well, uh, sorry. So now I'm going to get into the specific watch today. What's different about this one than the original Caspian Sea Monster? Well, first of all, as you know, Vostok Europe always has an inspiration for their watches. There's a story behind every watch. They don't just build a watch, they build a story. Um, and, and there's an inspiration. In this case, it's this really funky plane that you see here, the model on my desk. It's called an Equanoclon, uh, and the nickname for it, it wasn't, the Caspian Sea Monster was not its official name. It got to be known as the Caspian Sea Monster because of how just bizarre, look at it, you know, it's how just bizarre it is in its design and how it looked going across the water on the Caspian Sea. This is what's called a ground effect vehicle. And what that means, it's, it's kind of like a hybrid between a hovercraft and a plane because what it does is it creates this really strong uh, cushion of air. It's about 20 feet above the water and it runs along that cushion of air. So it allows it, it, allow, it allowed the plane, and, and, and sadly they're not still used today. They really were amazing vehicles. Uh, it allowed the plane to go very fast at a very, very close to the water um, and carry extremely heavy loads very economically. Um, when people saw this crazy thing on the water, they started referring to it as the Caspian Sea Monster. So we, uh, we as in Vostok Europe, um, actually I was a part of the original conversation when we decided, um, what was it we were talking about? Yeah, we, we, made, the, we made the joke that, uh, that Omega has the Sea Master, I believe that's what their, um, that watch is called, has the Sea Master and we have the Sea Monster. Um, and so I was actually a part of when we decided, let's start using the nickname, because Ikranoplan is the official name of the plane. So that's the inspiration for this watch. Um, and that's, and it's actually on the case back, etched under the case back. Again, you guys have heard me say this a thousand times. I love the case back work that Vostok Europe does. 
Look at the shape on that and the etching. Now, what's different about these? It's the same case. It's a 47 millimeter case, and I actually don't believe they made any substantive changes to the case on the watch. But what makes this collection different than the original Caspian Sea Monster is it's using a technology that actually wasn't even available. Let me move around to a different one so you get a different look on the close up here. Um, that wasn't even available on the original Caspian Sea Monster at the time. Because this is new technology from MB Microtech that just came out less than a year ago. Maybe a little more than a year ago. I know when I did the tour of MB Microtech uh, during Basel last year, they, they were already producing them. So it, it may be a little over a year. They're called hair lights, and it's exactly what it sounds like. They're referring to them like hair on your head. And the reason they are is they are the thinnest tritium tubes in the world. A regular tritium tube on your regular watch that has tritium tubes is one millimeter across. Now that's crazy enough as it is to think that you've got a piece of glass that they're shoving tritium in and they're shoving loom in there and it's only a millimeter across and they still seal that and it works. The hair lights are 0.3 millimeters across. I mean, I saw them putting these together in Switzerland at their facility and you can't even, you look at it and you can't even believe that there's actually space in there that they could put anything in. And so they, they, they invested a ton of money in R&D uh, to put together these new uh, hair lights. Why you want them on a watch and what makes them better than regular tritium tubes is they are really great for putting on hands on the watch because the original tritium tubes, okay, you're talking about at the, at the one millimeter size, you can only have so much weight on a watch hand, okay? As that, as that hand is pressing down on the pinion, the, the movement is designed only to carry so much weight in a hand. Well, as watches have gotten bigger over the past uh, few years, you know, big, bigger and bigger watches have become popular, you were already adding weight by making longer hands. And a lot of times these were being used on movements that were not originally designed to have that level of weight being put on the pinion. So then when you add a tritium tube, you're adding that much more weight to the hand. Well, when it is the millimeter across, the one millimeter across, you can only go so long before you get a lot of weight pressing down on the hands. The hair lights allow you to have a much longer tube on the hands because they're, it's more than half reduction in size versus the regular tritium tubes, so you get a lot more illumination on the hands. Now, the downside is it's a new technology that MB Microtech put a lot of R&D in, so they are very expensive. So by making the choice, by Vostok here making the choice to use um, the hair lights on this, it did make the Caspian Sea Monster, this particular execution of this group of watches, um, more expensive because of it. Um, in fact, one hair light is the same cost of, as putting four regular tubes in a watch. So it is four times the cost of one tube. Uh, the other thing about this one is this has the most tubes that uh, Vostok Europe has ever had. There are 21 trigger light tubes uh, in this watch. So it is the brightest in terms of the total number of tubes. Now, the other thing about this one, um, when the first Caspian Sea Monsters were coming out, Last Europe didn't do anything in chronographs. Now they do use the 6S series chronographs movements. So you can get a Caspian Sea Monster with the full functioning chronograph, which you weren't able to do in the past. I'm going to take a minute here and go through the different color executions. There are four automatics in the, the new Caspian Sea Monsters, and there are four chronographs. The automatics are... When I say that, I feel like I'm, and the nominees for best trigger light watch are um, the orange with the NH35 automatic movement. And this, guys, is orange. Uh, it's not, it's not neon orange. I mean, it's not like off the charts crazy, but it is an orange watch. And it does come with an orange silicone strap. By the way, if you pick up a 
one of these from r2awatches.com. We do include both straps. We include the silicone and they do have leather straps as well. Um, and we put them in the really amazing dry box, which I'll talk about more in a minute. Um, so if you pick it up from r 2 Watches, we also did release to any other retailers in North America that carry Vostok Europe, uh, as you know, we're the distributors as well. We did provide both straps. The, the regular package of this watch is actually supposed to come with just one. Um, I don't know if any of the other retailers are offering the, the dry box, but we are offering that at our 2 a watches. Okay, so there's the orange. Um, and it's been a while since Vostok Europe really did an orange, a new orange execution, so that was very much uh, people were looking for that. One of my personal favorites in the collection is the blue, and this is this rich, deep colored blue. Um, a little bit unusual for Vostok Europe is the fact that they did the, um, the accents in yellow gold instead of the typical rose gold. Let me get this in focus here. There we go on the second feed. Um, so you've got the yellow gold accents against this beautiful blue. The dials are amazingly decorated. I'm hoping I'm catching that in the second feed here for you guys who are watching that. Uh, the dials are just beautifully decorated. Um, so then you got the blue option. Then this uh, beige, I don't know really, it's kind of a yellow, it's kind of a beige, it's, it's, a, it's an unusual color. It's a color that, I, that quite frankly, I don't think Vasa Kirba has used this exact, this exact color before. They've done some beige type dials, but this is different. Um, also, the dial on this execution of the new Caspian Sea Monsters is a dual layer dial, which they did not do before. So you've got the chapter ring with the tritium tubes on it is actually raised above the inner dial, which gives you a really nice look on the watch. So you got this, the, again, I'm going to call it beige. Uh, if anybody else wants to make a comment of what color you think that should be referred to, please do. And then the other, let's see, where's, where's, the, blue, the, blue, where's the other automatic? And then a, like a light gray, sort of a light charcoal. Um, it also has the yellow gold accents, and that's in the automatic. Now in the chronograph, by the way, this whole collection actually is very different in color choices for Vostok Europe than a lot of things they've done in the past. And I like that. I was really pleased to see Igor and his team kind of venturing out um, because they had gotten where they were kind of producing the same group of colors over and over again with the different executions. And I really am, am enjoying seeing them kind of branch out and doing some more unusual colors here. And, I, and I've gotten very positive um, response from customers about that as well, that they're liking that as well. So this is the same beige, but again, I'm going to call it that. Um, uh, maybe, no, I wouldn't say taupe, that this isn't dark enough to be taupe. But anyway, this got, so this is actually, there's two of them that you've got the same color execution in the automatic as you do in the chronograph. Um, this one is the beige with the with the chronograph execution, and then as I mentioned earlier, you've got it in the automatic. Okay, so they're they're twins with two different movements. Then this one is the twin of the gray. Well, not quite actually. I can't say those are twins. This one has the uh, doesn't have the yellow gold accents like the other one. It has the blue pop on the pusher. It has uh, yellow accents. It doesn't have the yellow gold, but it's it's similar. Uh, the the dial color, well, even that's kind of different. Uh, so I'm I'm wrong to say those two are in the same family. Those are two very different watches, actually. And then there is the only one that has this. Okay, wait a minute. One, two, three. Where is my stealth watch? Where's that one? Where's that one? What did I do? Oh, it's right in front of me. It had been a snake. It had bit me. Um, this is what I call the stealth, okay? I, I like this look, not everybody does, it's not for everybody, but this is a, what, a, it's a tone on tone on tone. It's all black. There's, there, other than the tritium tubes, there's virtually no color in this watch. And that's why I call them the stealth watches because it's all black. I mean, this is, this is, this is as black as it gets. Um, I mean, basically the only way they would have made this watch any blacker would be to not have the tritium tubes. Um, you know, but you have to have something offsetting it so you can actually tell the time. But this is a very, very dark, stealthy look. So if you like that, you're going to love that in the Caspian Sea Monster. In terms of specs, 
no surprise, similar to everything produced by Vostok Europe these days, other than the gas limo, which is still their, um, their dress line. Um, you've got a 200 meter uh, water resistance. I think these are 200 meter. I want to double check and make sure I get it right. Yep, 20 ATM. These are 20 ATM or 200 meter, which puts them in the category of a professional grade dive watch. Um, they're all surgical grade stainless steel. In fact, every one of the so wait, there's titanium as well. Yeah, this one's yeah, these two are titanium. The orange, I believe, is the bead blasted. Yeah, stainless steel. Oh, you know what I can do, guys? I can look at the case back. Yes. These two are titanium. I should have been able to tell just by the weight. Uh, titanium, obviously 40% lighter than stainless steel, very resilient material. Uh, very popular, so they did the titanium in this. Everything else is in the surgical grade stainless steel. And it's either plated or not plated. And again, by the way, the blue plating, just phenomenal. Um, so you've got the titanium option. They didn't do a bronze in this, uh, and I actually asked Igor about that because I really think this would have been an awesome watch in the bronze. The reason why it gets back to the conversation we were having earlier, as if you guys were having a dialogue with me, um, it gets back to what we were talking about earlier, that... Uh, the hair lights added a good bit of cost to this watch. If it had been bronze as well, that would have put this watch up around $1,000. Um, so uh, Igor decided not to do a bronze case in this one in favor of doing the hair lights. So that's why you've got the two uh, metals they, they tend to use popularly, which is the titanium and the surgical grade stainless steel. Um, you've got, again, automatic versions. You've got the chronograph versions. That is the 6S series chronographs. That movement from Miyota actually is a more expensive movement than the NH35. This is a top of the line uh, quartz chronograph movement. In fact, I'm gonna start one. Oh, that's an automatic. I'm gonna start this one. So you can see the smoothness. When you move, when you start the chronograph, the sweep second for the chronograph it's almost like an automatic. And that gets back to the fact that this is a jeweled quartz movement with mechanical parts. So it really it, it has the appearance of the sweep of an automatic. Um, and I love the way it resets, just so smooth, it's really nice. I actually, that's one thing, well, uh, there, there, are, there are things to like about quartz watches and there are things to like about automatic watches. One of the things I really prefer in a quartz uh, chronograph versus a, uh, an automatic chronograph is the way the sweep second resets on most of them, that it slowly just comes back. Whereas on, on an auto, on a automatic or a mechanical chronograph, it pops right back into place. And I like watching that sweep anyway, I'm weird. Okay, so I'll give you a quick wrist shot. Let me grab the beige. This is, this is a good size watch, guys, 47. Wears big, most of them because he, they t tended to use the same colors on the rotating bezel as they did on the dial, unidirectional rotating bezel uh, for, for elapsed time use in diving. And uh, again, I have, I always like to tell you guys, I have about a seven and a half inch wrist, maybe a little bit more than that. My wrist is, is kind of flat on the top. So I actually can wear bigger watches than most guys with a seven and a half inch wrist can. Um, I would say if you're, you know, if you're between six and seven inch wrist, this is probably going to be a little big for you. Uh, if you're a guy who really likes big, big watches, this is certainly not an oversize. We're not talking about above 50 here, but at 47 with the way it's designed with the, uh, it's about 15 millimeters thick. Uh, you are talking about a watch that's, that's going to wear big. Uh, Vostok Europe makes big, bold watches for going to extremes. Um, so I think that's the, the highlights. I'll quickly show you the straps. I didn't take every strap out. They're just match, matching color leather straps. Not No surprise, the same level of quality you always see in Vostok Europe with the multi-layered leather, uh, the contrast stitching. Um, they don't do anything in leather that isn't just amazing. There's your orange. So if you want to tone down the orange and you don't like the, the orange silicone, you got the leather, so you just got the accent colors on the leather with the orange, so you can tone that down. Um, so that's it. I think I've covered everything. Um, you certainly are welcome to put questions below. Uh, we try to always have somebody 
who uh, is watching the show uh, from r 2 Watches, because obviously I can't, but who could answer questions and, and give dialogue while the show is running. I do want to mention, and I meant to mention this at the outset of the show, and I should have, um, I will be on tomorrow night on the regular time for uh, Talk About Watches with Tim Temple. We are scheduled to have a live show tomorrow night. In it, there's going to be the new Expedition North Poles, uh, one more of the new radio rooms, the new power reserve gas limos, and we've got a great uh, opportunity on the pre-patinaed or advanced patinaed or distressed or whatever term you prefer, uh, energias. Um, so you definitely want to join us tomorrow night. Um, talkaboutwatches.com, and it's, got, it's also a Facebook Live streaming show, and I'm looking forward to that. So I think that's it for this week, the new Caspian Sea Monster. Be sure and... Check out Vostok Europe Time Pieces, the closed group on Facebook, and ask to join. And next Wednesday, and even if you don't become a member of Vostok Europe Time Pieces group on Facebook, take a picture of your energy if you have one. If you don't have one, they're available at r2awatches.com. Um, and make, you know what? You order, let's see, it's Thursday. You order tonight. You probably could get it before next Wednesday. So you could be a part of Energy of Wednesday next week. Take a wrist shot. Put the hashtag Energy of Wednesday, put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, wherever you prefer on social media, Twitter, whatever, um, and join us because we've got a great group of guys and gals who are really enjoying uh, sharing the passion that is Vostok Europe Watches. So until next week, I'm Craig Hester and keep watching.